Hello dear students, in the first session of water chemistry, we discussed about potable water, water quality parameters, impurities, sources of water and finally, we discussed about one of the kinds of the impurities present in water that biologically oxidizable impurities that is BOD. In this session, we discuss about COD, chemical oxygen demand, what is COD, how it is determined and we, are, we will also be solving some problems on COD in this particular session. Thereby, you will be having a better idea, complete idea about what is BOD, COD and why we need to know about COD and BOD. COD is nothing but chemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand of wastewater. So, what is this chemical oxygen demand? So, we know already that among the various kinds of impurities present in water, one of the kinds of the impurities which are generally present in water are biologic or oxidizable impurities. Among these oxidizable impurities, there are one kind of impurities again called as biologically oxidizable impurities. So, how much of the biologically oxidizable impurities present in water that is indicated by what is called as BOD, biological oxygen demand. Now, we see what is this COD. COD is nothing but chemical oxygen demand. Chemical oxygen demand is a measure of the oxygen required to oxidize all type of oxidizable impurities whether they are organic impurities, inorganic oxidizable impurities, biological oxidizable impurities, they present in water sample. So, therefore, chemical oxygen demand is a measure of the oxygen required to oxidize all types of oxidizable impurities, whether they are biologically oxidizable or chemically oxidizable. So, we have discussed about BOD, biological oxygen demand. Biological oxygen demand is simply the measure of the amount of oxygen, amount of dissolved oxygen required to oxidize only biologically oxidizable impurities. Whereas, COD is the measure of the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all kinds of oxidizable impurities. Naturally, for any given water sample, COD value will always be more than BOD value or in some cases COD value may become equal to BOD value. We will discuss about the difference between COD and BOD later. As of now, COD is therefore is nothing but the measure of the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all kinds of oxidizable impurities present in the given water sample. So, what happens here? In measuring COD, we take the help of strong oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate. We take the help of strong oxidizing agent like potassium oxide dichromate. So, imagine a given water sample or a given source of water contains oxidizable impurities. It may be biologically oxidizable or chemically oxidizable impurities whether organic or inorganic. So, imagine a given water sample contains a certain amount of oxidizable impurities. Then what we do? We treat that water sample with potassium dichromate. When we do so, potassium dichromate as all of you know is a strong oxidizing agent. It acts as oxidizing agent by releasing nascent oxygen atom. This nascent oxygen will carry out the process of oxidation. So, therefore, any water sample containing oxidizable impurities is treated with potassium dichromate potassi uh, and reflexing the mixture for 2 to 3 hours. This potassium dichromate completely oxidizes all the oxidizable impurities present in the given water sample into CO2 and H2O. So, how much of the oxygen is released by potassium dichromate during the process of that oxidation is what we call as COD value of that given water sample. So, therefore, COD of any given water sample is defined as the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of the water sample, 1 liter of the water sample or 1 liter of the waste water using a strong oxidizing agent like, like acidified potassium dichromate. I repeat once again, COD is therefore defined as the amount of oxygen required to oxidize 
all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of the waste water using a strong oxidizing agent like acidified potassium dichromate. So, here you have to observe one thing that we are calling it as the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of the waste water. Waste water means contaminated water, impure water, polluted water because any water sample, any water source containing oxidizable impurities beyond the permitted limit then we call this as contaminated water, impure water or waste water or other way around any water sample containing any kind of the impurity or variety of the impurities beyond the permitted limits then that water becomes contaminated, polluted, impure or waste water. Therefore, we are calling here it as waste water. Therefore, COD of any water sample is nothing but amount of oxygen, how much of the oxygen is required in order to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of the waste water sample with the help of strong oxidizing agent like acidified potassium dichromate. So, therefore, whenever we try to find out COD value of any given water sample, we take 1 liter of that water sample, okay. You may have um, thousands and millions of liter of the water in a source, in a water source, but we want to find out whether this water, this water source is having uh, oxidizable impurities beyond the limit or not within the limit or not, we take 1 liter of that water sample and we treat with potassium dichromate in order to oxidize all those impurities present in 1 liter of that water sample. While measuring so, we find out, we calculate how much of the oxygen is required to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of that given water sample that is what we call as COD and this COD is indicated in by using the unit milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. For example, for any given water sample, if I say COD value of this water sample is 50 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube, that means what? In order to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of that water sample, we need to add, we need to provide 50 milligrams of oxygen. Suppose some other water sample, if I say the COD value of this water sample is 120 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. That means what? For that water sample, in order to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of that water sample, we need to provide 120 milligrams of oxygen. We provide that 120 milligrams of oxygen in the form of potassium dichromate. Therefore, if we know the COD value of this water sample, this water source is 120 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Then what we do? How much ever the water is there, that kind of water to that much of the water in order to provide that much of oxygen to oxidize the impurities, we treat that water with required quantity of potassium dichromate. In order to find out how much of potassium dichromate of the given concentration is needed to oxidize all the impurities present in the given water source, we need to measure the COD value of that given water sample. Cleared? No. So, another way around is suppose you are given with two water samples, water sample A, water sample B. For water sample A, COD value you are measuring, it, it comes out as, it's, it's come, it comes out as 50 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Water sample B, the COD value comes out as 80 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Naturally, straight away you can say that water sample B is more contaminated than water sample A, right? Because for water sample B, you need to supply more oxygen to oxidize the impurities means what? There are more impurities, there are more oxidizable impurities present in the water sample B. Therefore, for, a, for whichever the water sample, higher the value of COD, higher is the presence of oxidizable impurities. Lower the value of COD, lower is the presence of oxidizable impurities. And for any water sample to be suitable for our regular usage, COD value must be less than 10 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. That means the oxidizable impurities can be present only to that extent where COD value should be less than 10 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. So, therefore, 
we try to understand what is COD. COD is nothing but chemical oxygen demand, it is nothing but the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 liter of the water sample with the help of uh, strong oxidizing agent like acidified potassium dichromate. And COD value indicates as the quantity or the extent of oxidizable impurities present in any given water sample and the COD value is indicated in terms of milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Once we understand what is COD and what is BOD, what are the major differences between COD and BOD? See for between COD and BOD unit of measurement is same, COD also we indicate in terms of milligrams of oxygen per dm cube, BOD also we indicate in terms of milligrams of oxygen per dm cube, there is no difference there. Whereas, when it comes to COD, COD indicates the COD indicates COD value tells us the presence of all the oxidizable impurities, how much of the how much of the impurities present, what kind of impurities? All oxidizable impurities. Whereas BOD value indicates how much of only biologically oxidizable impurities present. So that is the reason COD value will always be higher than BOD. BOD value will be generally lower than COD. So, for a, for a given water sample if you measure COD as well as BOD, COD value will be higher than the BOD value for the same water sample because COD indicates, COD measures the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all kinds of oxidizable impurities whereas BOD measures the amount of oxygen required to oxidize only biologically oxidizable impurities. Only in such cases where a given water sample contains only biologically oxidizable impurities, in that case COD and BOD value will be equal to each other. Because the microorganisms oxidizes only, oxidize only biologically oxidizable impurities, whereas potassium dichromate kind of the oxidizing agent will oxidize biologically, chemically, all oxidizable impurities will be oxidized by potassium dichromate. Then, to measure the COD value and to measure the BOD value time required is there is a huge difference. We can measure the COD value of any given water sample in just 3 hours whereas to measure the BOD value as we already understood we need to take 5 days. We need, it takes 5 days because for 5 days we have to keep the water with the microorganisms at 20 degree Celsius therefore BOD process takes 5 days. These are the few comparisons between COD and BOD. Unit wise both of them are same milligrams of oxygen per dm cube and uh, COD uh, indicates the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all oxidizable impurities whereas BOD indicates the amount of oxygen required to oxidize only biologically oxidizable impurities. That is the reason COD value for a given water sample is always higher than the BOD value for the same water sample. Only in such case where BO, uh, the water sample contains only biologically oxidizable impurities in that case COD and BOD value can be same and time required to measure COD is just 3 hours whereas time required to measure BOD is more than uh, near uh, uh, it is 5 days altogether. Then we try to understand so we got to know what is COD, what is BOD, what are the differences between COD and BOD. Now we try to understand how to measure COD of any given water sample. You are given with a water sample imagine and it contains that water sample is waste water sample, impure water sample, it contains certain amount of oxidizable impurities and we need to find out how much of oxygen is required to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 1 litre of that water sample. That means you need to know how much of potassium dichromate of the given concentration is required to oxidize all those oxidizable impurities present in 1 litre of the water sample. To do that, to find out that we need to conduct an experiment to determine the COD value of the given wastewater sample. So what is the principle of this experiment? Very simple, what we do is we take the known volume of the wastewater sample, around 25 cm cube of the wastewater sample we take and we treat, we reflux that is we heat it with potassium, acidified potassium dichromate in, that is in the sulfuric acid medium. We take 25 ml of the uh, wastewater sample, we can take 50 ml also, 10 ml also, generally we take 25 ml of the wastewater sample. With that, to that we will be adding 25 ml of potassium dichromate 
and we will be also adding 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid 1 test tube in order to provide the acidic medium because all of you know that in the acidic medium potassium dichromate acts as a very good oxidizing agent. Therefore, the role of sulfuric acid here is to provide the acidic medium and this sulfuric acid and once we do so what happens is the oxidizable impurities. So, oxidizable impurities are indicated uh, commonly as a straight chain aliphatic compounds. So, these oxidizable impurities are oxidized by potassium dichromate in the acidic medium to uh, thereby these impurities gets oxidized into CO2 and H2O and potassium dichromate itself get reduced to chromium 3 plus chromium 3 plus and in this process as you are observing here we are also taking the help of silver sulfate and mercuric sulfate silver sulfate and mercuric sulfate that means we take 25 ml of the wastewater sample to that we add 25 ml of potassium dichromate also we add 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid 1 test tube that sulfuric acid also contains the required amount of small amount of it they are required in very small amount the small amount of silver sulfate and mercuric sulfate. What, the, what is the role of the silver sulfate? Silver sulfate here acts as a catalyst for this oxidation process. Silver sulfate here acts as a catalyst for this oxidation process. But the problem here is we are dealing with wastewater, impure water, right? Generally, generally, usually any wastewater sample, any impure water contains chlorine. Whenever the chlorine is there in the wastewater, to that wastewater, when you add sulfuric acid containing silver sulfate and mercuric sulfate, silver sulfate immediately reacts with chlorine present in the wastewater forming silver chloride. Thereby, it loses its catalytic activity or we lose the catalytic activity of silver sulfate. We, add, we are adding silver sulfate here to act as a catalyst for this process, but wastewater generally contains chlorine. Thereby, what happens? The moment you add 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid into the mixture of wastewater and potassium dichromate, the silver sulfate present in this uh, sulfuric acid immediately interacts with chlorine of the wastewater. Instead of acting as a catalyst, it will be attacked by chlorine and thereby it interacts with chlorine to form silver chloride, thereby we lose the activity of silver sulphate as a catalyst. That is the reason we also take the help of mercuric sulphate. What this mercuric sulphate will do? If the wastewater sample or generally wastewater sample contains chlorine, what happens is the moment you add sulfuric acid containing silver sulphate and mercuric sulphate, the mercuric sulphate or the mercuric ions immediately interact with chloride ions of the wastewater and binding them in the form of a complex, mercury chloride complex. Thereby, the mercuric sulphate will be avoiding the inter interaction between the chlorine and the silver or mercury chloride will be avoiding the interference of chloride ions in the catalytic, catalytic activity of silver sulphate. So, therefore, the point here is what we do the in order to measure the COD of any wastewater sample, we take 25 ml of wastewater sample, to that we add 25 ml of potassium dichromate, to that we add one, one test tube of 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is added to provide the acidic medium. That sulfuric acid also contains silver sulphate and mercuric sulphate. Silver sulphate's role is to act as catalyst and mercuric sulphate role is to avoid the interference of chloride ions of the wastewater in the catalytic activity of silver sulphate because chloride ions interacts with silver sulphate forming silver chloride thereby damaging its catalytic activity. So, therefore, the role of mercuric sulphate is to interact with chloride forming the complex ion thereby binding the chloride ions, binding the chloride ions or binding any other halide ion present in the wastewater thereby avoiding the interference of chloride ions with the silver sulphate thereby allowing the silver sulphate to act as catalyst. So, therefore, uh, the role of silver sulphate is to act as catalyst. The role of mercuric sulphate is to bind the chloride ion thereby facilitating or allowing the silver sulphate to act as catalyst. By mix by the in this way by carrying out the reaction between acidified potassium dichromate and wastewater sample we find out the uh, so we carry out the reaction. Once we carry out the reaction what happens generally when we take 25 ml of wastewater sample and 25 ml of the potassium dichromate mixing with each other in the presence of acidified potassium in the, with the presence of 1 sulfuric acid, 
all 25 ml of potassium decrement generally is not required for oxidizing all the impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. In that way only we prepare potassium dichromate. So therefore, out of 25 ml of potassium dichromate what we take, a part of the potassium dichromate is consumed for this oxidation process. Remaining potassium dichromate is still remained as potassium dichromate only in the reaction vessel. In that way only we prepare potassium dichromate. Okay. So, the remaining potassium dichromate what we do? We titrate, we find out how much of the potassium dichromate is remained unreacted. We find it out by titrating against standard solution of potassium ferrous ammonium sulphate. So, what we do? We take 25 ml of wastewater, 25 ml of potassium decremate to that we add 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid 1 test tube, we carry out the process and generally to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample, we do not need 25 ml of potassium decremate, we need less than 25 ml of potassium decremate. So, therefore, when we carry out the process what happens? Out of 25 ml of potassium decremate, a part of the potassium decremate is consumed for oxidizing the impurities present in the 25 ml of wastewater sample, remaining amount of potassium dichromate that is unreacted potassium dichromate, how much is remained is found out by treating, titrating with standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. By, by knowing about how much of the uh, potassium dichromate remain unreacted, we come to know how much of the potassium dichromate is consumed for oxidizing the impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater. In this way, by knowing this value indirectly, we will be finding out the amount of dissolved amount of oxygen required to oxidize one uh, impurities present in one liter of the wastewater sample. Thereby, we find out the COD value of the given wastewater sample. So, the point is here we find out how, how much of the potassium dichromate remain unreacted by titrating it against ferrous ammonium sulphate standard solution. Okay. And by finding out that, we will come to know how much of potassium dichromate is consumed for oxidizing the impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. By using that value, we find out the COD value of the given wastewater sample. So, now we will see, this is the principle behind the experiment. Now, we will see how to carry out this experiment to find out the COD value of any given water sample. So, to find out the COD value of any given water sample before proceeding with the procedure. So, why we need to know about the COD value of any given water sample? The concept is, the reason is very simple. We use water not only as a solvent, not only as a medium, as a raw material, as one of the reactants also in many of the industries like food processing industries, pharmaceutical industries, etc. In that case, we need to check the water for its quality parameters before using it. And one of the parameters as all of you know is COD. So, therefore, we conduct the COD experiment there. We find out whether the oxidizable impurities present in that water supplied water is beyond the permitted limit or within the permitted limit. If it is present beyond the permitted limit, then we have to remove those impurities. To remove those oxidizable impurities, we have to treat with the potassium dichromate of the given concentration to find out how much of potassium decrement is required, we need to conduct the experiment. That is the major advantage of this experiment. Now, coming to the procedure of the experiment. So, in the while finding out the COD value of any given water sample, uh, in that experimental procedure, first step is, first point is, we have to prepare the standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. We need to prepare standard solution of ferrous ammonium, ferrous ammonium sulphate because I already told you that we have to find out the amount of unreacted potassium dichromate by titrating against standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. Therefore, first step of the experiment is the preparation of standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. Very simple. We have to take the known weight of ferrous ammonium sulphate crystals and you pass the crystals. First, you dissolve those crystals. Uh, by adding two test tubes of dilute sulfuric acid because ferrous ammonium sulphate crystals are highly susceptible towards hydrolysis. Therefore, if you add water directly, they react with water, they undergo hydrolysis with water forming ferrous hydroxide or ferric hydroxide to avoid that, 
we have to add two test tubes of dilute sulfuric acid, dissolve the crystals in dilute sulfuric acid, then you add required amount of the water. If you are preparing 100 ml of the solution, add 100 ml of water up to 100 ml mark in a standard flask, you add water, shake it well, thereby you are preparing standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate because you know that standard solution is nothing but the solution was concentration is known to us and any standard solution is prepared by dissolving known weight of the solute in known volume of the solvent. In this way, first step of the experiment is the preparation of standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. So, once you prepare the standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate, now we have to carry out the titration. The, there, are, uh, there are two steps in which we carry out the titration. First step is what is called as back titration. First step is what is called as back titration. Very simple. What we do is take 25 cm cube of wastewater sample in a conical flask. To that you add 25 ml of potassium dichromate, 25 ml of the potassium, given potassium dichromate and to that you add one test tube full of 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid. That sulfuric acid contains silver sulphate and mercuric sulphate. We already know what is the role of silver sulphate and mercuric sulphate. So, what we are doing? 25 ml of wastewater sample in a conical flask. To that, we will be adding 25 ml of the potassium dichromate. To that, we are adding one test tube of 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid. And this mixture will be reflexed for 30 minutes. When we reflex it for 30 minutes, what happens is in that 30 minutes during the reflexing period, the potassium dichromate in the presence of sulfuric acid, this potassium dichromate will be oxidizing all the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. So, the potassium dichromate in the presence of sulfuric acid upon reflection, it will be carrying, it will be oxidizing all the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. Okay. So, as we already discussed, in order to oxidize all the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample, we do not need 25 ml of potassium dichromate. We need less than 25 ml of the potassium dichromate. We may need 10 ml or 15 ml, 12 ml, 17 ml, whatever it is. So, therefore, when you take 25 ml of wastewater, 25 ml of potassium decremate, one test tube of sulfuric acid, reflex, reflexing it for half an hour, what happens? All the oxidizable impurities are oxidized, but to oxidize those impurities, we do not need 25 ml, but we have taken 25 ml. Therefore, out of 25 ml of potassium decremate, a part of the potassium decremate is required for oxidizing the impurities. Remaining potassium decremate will be still remained in the conical flask or in the reaction vessel. So, out of 25 ml, 10 ml may be remained, 15 ml may be remained, 12 ml may be remained, we do not know. But out of 25 ml, a part of the potassium decremate is still remained in the conical flask unreacted. We have to find out how much of the potassium decremate is remaining in the conical flask without undergoing any reaction. In order to do so, what we do is after reflexing it for half an hour, we titrate, we titrate that reaction mixture or we titrate that unreacted potassium decremate against standard FA solution taken in the burette, taken in the burette by with the help of ferroin as a indicator. So, what we do? 25 wastewater, 25 ml potassium decremate, one test tube of 1 to 1 sulfuric acid, and we reflex it for half an hour. Then what we do? We add 3 drops of ferroin indicator. 3 drops of ferroin indicator. Ferroin indicator is reddish brown in color. The moment you add 3 drops of ferroin indicator, that indicator will be forming a weak complex with remaining potassium decremate, thereby it loses its color. And that reaction mixture, after adding the indicator, titrate that reaction mixture against standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate taken in the burette. When you add ferrous sulphate into the burette, into the conical flask from the burette, what happens is the moment you add ferrous sulphate, potassium decremate present in the conical flask, unreacted potassium decremate, it will be oxidizing ferrous sulphate to ferric sulphate. Itself get reduced to chromic sulphate. Itself get reduced to chromic sulphate. So, therefore, gradually when you keep on adding ferrous ammonium sulphate from the burette, 
potassium dichromate will be oxidizing the incoming ferrous sulfate into ferric sulfate itself get reduced to chromic sulfate therefore gradually the quantity of the potassium dichromate in the conical flask decreases decreases and decreases finally finally when all the potassium dichromate is reacted with ferrous ammonium sulfate which is being added from the burette the indicator which is formed weak complex with the potassium dichromate becomes free indicator comes out what is the color of the indicator indicator color is reddish brown therefore the color will be changing from bluish green to reddish brown because when you are carrying out the uh, titration gradually potassium dichromate oxidizes oxidizes ferrous to ferric itself get itself get reduced to chromic sulfate chromic sulfate is a green colored compound therefore gradually the so, solution becomes bluish green in color finally at the end point the color changes to reddish brown so that's the indication that all potassium dichromate is reacted there and you note down the once you do so now note down the volume of the ferrous ammonium sulfate consumed in this process let's call it as y cm cube and we also have to note down the normality of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution we have to note down the normality of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution let's take it as z normal and we also note down the amount of potassium dichromate sorry amount of ferrous fas solution which is required to react with unreacted potassium dichromate in the back titration process let's call it as ycm cube what is the end point end point is bluish green to reddish brown cleared no so therefore overall 25 ml of waste water 25 ml of potassium dichromate one test tube of sulfuric acid one stone sulfuric acid reflux it for half an hour then add three drops of ferrovin indicator then you titrate against standard solution of fas solution taken in the burette till the color changes from bluish green to reddish brown note down the volume of fas solution consumed and let's call it as y cm cube and you also note down the normality of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution normality of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution is calculated in usual process usual way that is how much of the salt is being taken right if you are preparing 250 cm cube of standard solution of fas solution salt weight into 4 divided by divided by molecular mass or equivalent mass of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution for that matter ferrous ammonium sulfate equivalent mass and molecular mass are one and the same so in this way you will be calculating the normality of the standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulfate for that matter whenever we prepare any standard solution the first and foremost thing we do is finding out its normality or molarity so this is what about back titration once you do the back titration then we have to do one more titration called as blank titration blank titration is much simpler than back titration in blank titration what we do is everything is same except only one thing that we do not take 25 ml of wastewater, 25 ml of the wastewater. In a conical flask we take 25 ml of potassium dichromate, one test tube of 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid, same sulfuric acid, 2 to 3 drops of indicator and titrate it, titrate it, titrate against same FAS standard solution till the color changes from bluish green to reddish brown. I repeat once again blank titration is same as back titration except one difference that in the blank titration we do not use waste water. We take 25 ml of only potassium dichromate 1 is to 1 sulfuric acid 1 test tube ferrovin indicator titrate against same FAS solution and titrate till the color changes from bluish green to reddish brown. When the bluish green changes to reddish brown note down the volume of the FAS consumed let us call it as x cm cube let us call it as x cm cube therefore x cm cube is nothing but blank titration value y cm cube is nothing but back titration value and I think you know that blank titration value will always be higher than back titration value because it during the back titration what we do is we titrate the remain out of 25 ml of the potassium dichromate a part of the potassium dichromate is consumed for oxidizing the impurities present in the wastewater right only remaining potassium dichromate we titrate against FAS 
in back titration. Whereas in blank titration, we titrate all 25 ml of the potassium dichromate against the FAS. Because here we are not using any waste water, therefore there are no oxidizable impurities. Therefore, here in the back blank titration, all 25 ml of the potassium dichromate is titrated against FAS. Whereas in back titration, less than 25 ml of the potassium decremate is titrated against FAS because a part of the 20, of potassium decremate out of 25 ml is consumed for oxidizing the impurities. That is the reason blank titration value is always higher than back titration value. Therefore, X is always more than Y and X minus Y, X minus Y that will give you the amount of potassium decremate required to oxidize the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. In this way, to find out the COD value of any given water sample, what we do is, first we prepare the standard solution of FAS solution, FAS crystals, then we carry out back titration and find out the value of back titration, Let's call, we are calling it as YCM cube, then we carry out blank titration, we are calling it as XCM cube and we understood that x is always greater than y, x minus y will give you the amount of potassium decremate which is required to oxidize the impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. Once we know these values, then we can do the calculation very simply, very, in a very simple way. It is a standard relationship that is 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS solution is equal to 1 milli equivalent of oxygen that, that is nothing but 8 milligrams of oxygen. That means what? 1 cm cube, in order to oxidize 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS solution, we need 8 milligrams of oxygen. Or other way around, therefore, we say 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS is equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. So, we are finding out the COD value of the given water sample. COD means what? how many milligrams of oxygen required to oxidize the impurities present in 1 liter of the water sample, right. So, we are indicating the how we are finding out amount of oxygen required to oxidize those impurities in the given water sample in terms we are in terms of milligrams of oxygen we are relating we are kind we are finding out with respect to the FAS solution because we are using standard FAS solution during the titration here. Therefore, 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS solution is equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. If it is so, if it is so, 8 x minus y cm cube of z normal FAS solution. I repeat once again, the meaning of this is to oxidize 1 centimeter cube of 1 normal FAS solution, we need 8 milligrams of oxygen. If it is so, to oxidize x minus y cm cube of z normal FAS solution, how much of oxygen is required? In, in the form of potassium decremate that is 8 into x minus y into z milligrams of oxygen. That means, if you substitute the values here, whatever the values you get, this is the amount of oxygen required to oxidize the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. Because this value we are getting x minus y, this value we are getting for 25 ml of the wastewater sample. Therefore, this much of the oxygen, this may, these many milligrams of oxygen are required to oxidize impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample. If it is so, for 1000 cm cube of the wastewater sample, how much is required? For 25 ml, this much is the amount of oxygen required. For 1000 ml, how much is required? So, that is that we can get it get by the formula 8 into x minus y into z into 1000 by 25 milligrams of oxygen. Therefore, COD of the wastewater sample is equal to 8 into x minus y into z into 1000 by 25 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Therefore, because we measure COD or we indicate COD for any water sample for 1 liter to standardize it to have a standardized relationship. So, we, we indicate the COD value for 1 liter of the wastewater sample. Here we get in this experiment for 25 ml how much? Finally, we are converting it to if COD uh, oxygen required for 25 ml if, if it is this much for 1000 ml how much? That will give us the COD value of the given wastewater sample. In this way, Whenever we come across any wastewater sample to find out the COD value of that wastewater sample, what we do? 
first we prepare standard solution of FAS measuring calculating its normality then we carry out back to iteration we are we are calling it as x y cm cube then we carry out black blank to iteration blank to iteration value is always higher than back to iteration we understood x minus y value will give us an idea about the amount of potassium dichromate required to oxidize the oxidizable impurities present in 25 ml of the wastewater sample once we get those values by using the standard relationship we we do the calculation and finally we find out the cod value of the given wastewater sample so this is how we can find out the cod value of the given wastewater sample so this concept we can get much much better idea much much more clarity by solving one or two problems based on this same concept so now we have understood what is COD, what is the principle behind measuring the COD value of any given wastewater sample, what are the differences between COD and BOD and how to determine the COD of a given water sample we understood. Now we apply the same concept, try to solve some problems, thereby we try to, we can understand, we can get much more clear idea about the COD of any wastewater sample. So now let us take uh, an example of solving the problem in COD. Let us say in a COD experiment 25 ml of the polluted water was allowed to react with 25 ml of the potassium dichromate solution. Okay. Potassium dichromate left over that is in back titration it is uh, it's, it means that it is in, it is in black, back titration. Potassium dichromate left over after oxidizing the impurities when titrated required 11.5 cm cube of 0 0.025 normal FA solution. So, back titration value is how much? 11.5 cm cube, the amount of uh, potassium decrement unreacted when it is titrated against 0 0.025 normal FA solution, it consumes 11.5 cm cube of FA solution. Okay. Therefore, back titration value is 11.5 cm cube, normality of FA is 0 0.05. Okay. So, 0 0.025. Then we carry out the blank titration. In the blank titration, same 25 ml of potassium decrement alone, same FA solution. This time it consumed 18.5 cm cube of FA solution. As we already know, blank titration value is always higher than back titration value. Therefore, whenever any problem is given on the COD concept, Whichever the higher titration value is nothing but the blank titration value, lower titration value is nothing but the back titration value and we have to know the normality of FAS solution that is also being given here. Therefore, we know what is X, what is X, what is Y, we also know what is the normality of FAS solution. Once we know these things, we can easily solve the problem to understand or to find out the COD value of the given wastewater sample. Therefore, when the problem is given like this, when the problem is given in the examination, what you have to do is you have to note down the data. What is the data given? That is the blank titration value 18.5 cm cube that is nothing but Y cm cube, X cm cube and 11.5 back titration value 11.5 that is nothing but X cm, Y cm cube sorry and 0 0.025 that is the normality of FAS Z that is equal to 0.025. 0 to 5 normal. These values you have to note down first as data. So, once you do so, now we know the standard relationship that is 1 cm cube of 1 normal FA solution. You have to write here, we know that 1 cm cube of 1 normal FA solution is equal to 8 milligrams of oxygen, is equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. If it is so, x minus y cm cube of z normal FA solution is equal to 8 into x minus y into z milligrams of oxygen. So, x minus value, y value is known to us, z value is known to us, right. So, then you substitute 18 point, therefore, if it is so, 18.5 minus 11.5 cm cube of 0 0.025 normal, that is z normal, FAS solution is equal to 8 into this, this minus this is 7 into 0 0.025 mg of oxygen. Okay. So, if you do so, therefore, we say 25 cm cube of wastewater sample contains 1.4 milligrams of oxygen. 
So, 25 cm cube of wastewater sample requires, not contains, requires 1.4 milligrams of oxygen to oxidize the impurities present in all 25 ml of the wastewater sample. So, this is how we have to calculate in the first step. This is for 25 ml. If it is for 25 ml, for 1000 ml how much? Therefore, for 1000 ml of the wastewater sample, 1.4 into 1000 by 25. For 25 ml, if it is 1.4, for 1000 ml how much? You are going to get it as 56 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. So, therefore, COD of this wastewater sample is equal to 56 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. So, in this way, we can calculate the COD value of any given wastewater sample provided we know the blank titration value, back titration value and normality of FAS cleared. No. So, therefore, this is the this is the common type of the problem which is being asked in the examination also on COD concept. They will give you what is the amount of water taken and blank titration, back titration value, blank titration value and FAS. Here one point you need to understand is first you note on the data use the standard relationship, substitute the values, do the calculation. Here, in this problem, 25 ml of wastewater is being taken. So, therefore, it is 25 ml. Suppose in some problem, suppose if they say 20 ml of the wastewater is being taken or 30 ml of the wastewater is being taken, in that case, it is going to be not 25, it is going to be 20 or 30 uh, depending upon whichever the volume of wastewater is being given. It is not always 25. It is simply nothing but the amount of wastewater given in the problem. So, that there you have to be careful. In this way, you can calculate the COD value of very any wastewater sample. If you know the first step relationship, if you know this relationship and the, this relationship remaining thing is simple multiplication and division. So, this is one kind of the problem which can be asked uh, on COD. Okay? Another kind of the problem which can be asked on COD is uh, they may ask you to solve the COD problem uh, in in uh, in from the uh, from the point of your potassium dichromate. It's a direct experiment. We can say direct COD experiment. So here, in a COD experiment, 20 cm cube of wastewater sample consumes 30 cm cube of 0 0.01 molar potassium dichromate for the oxidation of impurities. Calculate COD value of the wastewater sample. So here straight away how much of the potassium dichromate of certain concentration is required to oxidize impurities present in certain amount of water is directly given. It is a direct experiment. In this case, how to find out the COD value? Very simple. 1 centimeter cube of 1 normal potassium dichromate is equivalent to 1 centimeter cube of 1 normal FAS that is equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. In the earlier problem, while while uh, discussing about the determ determination of COD, we written that 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS is equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. That means, 8 milligrams of oxygen is required to oxidize 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS. Here we are adding one more thing here, 1 cm cube of 1 normal potassium decrement is equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. That means, what 1 cm cube of 1 normal potassium decrement releases 8 milligrams of oxygen because all of you know that potassium decrement is an oxidizing agent. It acts as an oxidizing agent by releasing nascent oxygen and 1 cm cube of 1 normal potassium decrement always releases 8 milligrams of oxygen. Therefore, we can say 1 cm cube of 1 normal potassium decrement can oxidize 1 cm cube of 1 normal FAS. That is always equivalent to 8 milligrams of oxygen. But this relationship, in this relationship, we are taking potassium decrement in terms of its in uh, taking the concentration of potassium decrement in terms of its in terms of its normality. But in the problem, it is given the concentration of potassium decrement is given in terms of its molarity. For potassium decrement, normality and molarity are different. Whereas for FAS, normality and molarity are same because whenever ferrous is oxidized to ferric, there is only one electron change. That is the reason for FAS. Normality and molarity are one and the same, but for potassium decrement, normality and molarity are different. Therefore, you have to convert molarity into normality. It conversion is very simple. There is a standard formula that is molarity. Uh, molarity is equal to 
molarity into molecular weight divided by equivalent weight will give you normality of potassium decrement. Will give you normality of potassium decrement. Therefore, 0 0.01 molar potassium decrement is equal to 0 0.01 that is molarity into molecular weight of potassium decrement divided by equivalent weight of potassium decrement will give you the potassium decrement concentration in terms of normality, in terms of normality. So, therefore, that is equal to 0 0.01 is the molarity given into 294 molecular mass of potassium decrement divided by 49 equivalent mass of potassium decrement that will give you the normality of potassium decrement that is 0 0.06 normal potassium decrement, 0 0.06 normal potassium decrement. So, therefore, in the first step in this kind of the problem convert normality into molarity. First you note down this relationship then convert normality in molarity into normality. So, then we know if 1 cm cube of 1 normal potassium decrement is equal to 8 milligrams of oxygen if it is so 30 cm cube because we need 30 cm cube potassium decrement right. If it is so 30 cm cube of 0 0.06 normal potassium decrement is equivalent to 8 into 30 into 0 0.06 milligrams of oxygen that is equal to 14.4 milligrams of oxygen. Therefore, 14.4 milligrams of oxygen is required to oxidize the impurities present in how much of the water? 20 cm cube of water. It is for 20 cm cube of water. If for 20 cm cube we need 14.4, for 1000 cm cube how much you do here? That is 8 into 30 into 0.06 into 1000 by 20, you are going to get 72 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. So, this is how we can in a very simple way we can calculate COD of the wastewater sample even when the problem is given uh, in, in a situation where the direct oxidation of the impurities is carried out by using potassium decrement. And in this kind of the problem if the concentration of potassium decrement is given in terms of molarity you have to convert molarity into normality. Suppose imagine if the concentration of the potassium decrement is given in terms of normality only straight away. In that case straight away 1 cm cube of 1 normal potassium decrement is equal to 8 milligrams of oxygen. Therefore, 30 cm cube of this much normal potassium decrement is equal to this much. Straight away you can substitute and calculate it. Therefore, dear students the while solving problems on COD only thing is you need to remember the relationship. First relationship and in the case of uh, background blank titration you need to this you need to remember this relationship and substitute the blank titration value back titration value or normality of FAS you can remaining thing is as I told you remaining thing is simple mathematical multiplication and division. So, these are the two kinds of the problems which can be asked on COD concept in the examination within these kinds these two kinds of the problems only values can be changed and sentences can be changed, but the concept is black titration value back, back titration value and concentration of FAS is known to us we can calculate the COD value in a simple way. So, uh, therefore, in this particular session we try to understand what is chemical oxygen demand and uh, what are the differences between COD and BOD and uh, how to find out the COD of the given water sample, what is the principle behind it, what is the procedure and finally, on the concept of COD we also learned how to solve some numerical problems thereby to get better idea about the concept of COD. Thank you.